The Pilgrimage of the Heart podcast is brought to you by PYO.Yoga, an online studio for all your yoga needs, including videos in Spanish and Russian. This podcast is also brought to you by Pilgrimage of the Heart Yoga, located in San Diego and serving over 1,000 yogis a week. Welcome to Pilgrimage of the Heart Interviews. Join us as we explore fascinating people and ideas in the world of yoga. Welcome. Today's podcast interview is with Richard Rosen. He is our guest today, and he began his study of yoga in 1980, trained for several years in the early 1980s at the BKS Iyengar Institute in San Francisco. In 1987, Richard co-founded the Piedmont Yoga Studio in Oakland, California, which existed for nearly 28 years, just closing its doors in 2015. Richard still teaches seven weekly classes in Oakland and the Berkeley area. He's a contributing editor at Yoga Journal Magazine and president of the board of a nonprofit foundation, which we're going to talk about, which is a, a, a wonderful organization. And Richard has written three books, which have been published by Shambhala, The Yoga of Breath, Pranayama, and Original Yoga. And he's working on a fourth book, which we're also going to touch base on today. Richard lives in a cottage built in 1906 in Berkeley, California. And Richard, I assume you're talking to us from your cottage. I'm talking to you from an office that's outside my cottage. The office yeah, outside the cottage. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks so much for asking me. And my first question to you is, what brought you, what led you to the practice of yoga? Uh, well, <laughs> I, uh, I moved down to the Bay Area uh, from Sacramento in, uh, in, in 1979 to finish up a master's degree at Cal. And things weren't going too well, and I, 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 um, I was sitting around this little apartment that I was living in at the time, and trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I thought of a book that I'd read earlier, a few years earlier, that had I had no idea what the guy was talking about. And all of a sudden, it, it something, a little bell went off in the back of my mind. I, I, I got the book, and it was like a. Uh, a 90 degree or was it 180 degrees I guess 180 degrees turnaround and all of a sudden I could really sort of get what the guy was talking about and, and the, the, the man's name was Krishnamurti you know Krishnamurti and um, it started me off on, you know it started me off looking around for other sources of, of books that might help me figure out what to do with myself eventually I, I found a, um, a book that said that yoga was the best exercise that there was ever invented so um, I, I just happened to also find a, a, a newspaper, a local newspaper at the time, that directed me to the yoga room uh, in Berkeley, which is a, you know a, few, a, few, about a mile down the street. From me. So uh, I, I just uh, I, I started yoga just to, to sort of help myself figure out what to do. And the, the Krishnamurti book. What was it about Krishnamurti that that, um, uh, or, or what was it about his writings that that woke up something inside you? I, I, I don't remember the book exactly which one it was, but um, yeah, it was just it was very inspiring. It, 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 you know, it, it 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 gave me insight into how I was feeling and, and why I was feeling the way I was feeling, and um, it just it just moved me to, to, to find other other sources of books like that. Before that time, I had really no interest in yoga whatsoever, and it, it just really it just really woke me up to, to, to the possibility. And and just recently, I, I was in Ohio to teach at, at, at a thing called the Yoga Crib. And I actually stayed in the room above which uh, Christian Martin did, did his writings. So, uh, wow, the, you know, the, the big circle of life keeps going. The circle of life, exactly. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. And you, so that's 1979, you turned to yoga for self-growth and for your, own, for your own growth. Years later, you're writing books for Shambhala. People around the world are, are learning yoga from you. What, was, there, was there a moment when you felt that transition from a, a student of yoga to not just a student, but also a teacher of yoga? Well, uh, sometimes I have a hard time believing I'm a teacher. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I consider myself still a student, and I've been very fortunate about uh, having been, being allowed to write those books. I really appreciate 
everything Shambhal has done for me. So, I, I, you know, I, I, I still consider myself a beginner and uh, a student. So, um, thank you for saying that I'm a teacher, but um, I'll, I'll pass on that for a while. <laughs> um, well, here, here at uh, here at our yoga studio in San Diego, we train a lot of people who want to become yoga yeah. teachers. And and what what do you say to someone who's inspired to teach to to give them confidence and, and courage to take that big step? <laughs> Well, it is a big step, and it's a big responsibility, and you really have to think about it. I think it's really, really hard before you become a teacher. Of course, it, it requires some training, and you want to you want to get the best training possible from wherever you know wherever you can find. Um, it, it's important to um, it's important to in the old days the, the yogis dedicated their life to the practice, and you know it, we can't quite do that nowadays, uh, but we have to. We have to still make a huge effort uh, if we want to uh, become a teacher. It's important to study the old books and uh, you know read read the new books that are available that, that give you insight in, into the old books. It's important to practice, and uh, it's important to uh, you know um, eventually get out there and and and, and find some, some some people you can you can teach and make your mistakes and get them out of the way and, and you know just keep just keep uh, plugging away. I mean it, it's it's. It's not a straight line progress to become a teacher. It, it's sort of Mr. Iyengar says you practice waxes and wanes like the moon, and yeah, that's I think that's the way your teaching career might go too. So it, it's important to get too discouraged right away. And one of the things I liked right away about the book of yours that I read, the Yoga of Breath, was that right away you come across quotes from the Upanishads and great teachers, and so you obviously revere and give a lot of importance to those source teachings. I think tradition is important. You know, I, nowadays uh, the newer, the, the younger yogis, the teachers. I'm not quite sure they know a whole lot about tradition. That's fine. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how important it is in certain context, but I do think that uh, I do think that it's important to have a little bit of knowledge about uh, you know the old yoga text and, and uh, you know uh, 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 there were generations and generations of, of yogis who were out there uh, you know doing their doing their, their, their practice. And, you know, the, the wisdom that they came up with is very important to, to know about. Right, and a lot of the great teachers in the that have come to the West, that they, they go right to those source teachings. I'm just thinking of Vivekananda and Aurobindo and people like that. You know, they, right. they're, uh, they're honoring the past, and I think it's great for current teachers to yeah. do the same. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's important. I, I'm not, yeah, I, 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 I don't know exactly how much you, you want to do that, depending on what, what school you're, you're teaching from, but you should know a little bit about at least how the uh, background. And you mentioned the importance of teachers practicing, and I'm wondering after these 35 uh, after 35 years of your own yoga journey, what your own daily practice looks like. Well, uh, I, I might have I might have mentioned that I, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's, uh, maybe right. uh, 13, 14. I, I'm not really clear uh, anymore. It's probably about 13, 14 years, and that. That of course, I, I don't know if you know anything about Parkinson's, but it's a neuromuscular uh, condition that makes you stiffer, uh, weaker, and um, less balanced, which is kind of just the reverse of everything I was working on for the first 20 years. Uh, so my practice has changed because of that. Uh, my balance is, I'm, let me just say first of all that I've been very, very fortunate with this, this condition. I, I, I People that I know um, can progress fairly rapidly to the point where after just several, just like uh, two or three years, they're, they're in pretty pretty bad condition. I, I'm 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 very fortunate. I, I, I it's very difficult to, to tell sometimes that I have anything uh, like Parkinson. But my practice still has had to change um, to, to accommodate some of the uh, some of the um, some of the shortcomings. Like my balance is a little bit off and. Uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be, so I, I use a lot of props. Uh, I I, um, I go a lot slower than I used to do. I need wall space to, um, to help hold myself up. And is your uh, practice primarily an asana practice, or you do you incorporate a lot of pranayama meditation? Well, I do. Uh, you know, uh, breathing it over the years has become a lot more interesting to me than pranayama uh, than uh, asana. And I, 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 my asana practice is 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 uh, is, is, is support. Supported, they use chairs and blocks and straps and things like that. And but I, I spend a lot more time than I used to on breathing. I, I think I'm not doing anything special. I'm just watching my breath most of the time, and um, 
is very important to, to have a breathing practice as part of your as part of your yoga practice. Um, most 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 yoga classes nowadays are are, are in fact asana classes. I, I read a, I read a re- article about Rodney Yee, and he said if he only had ten minutes to do his yoga, he would do the, his pranayama. That would be his preference. My good friend Rodney. I oh, good. Rodney. He's he's up there, right, in that area. He, he he was. He's living in New York now. Oh, okay. But uh, actually, he's the other co-founder of Pima Yoga. Oh, the two of you, the two of you co-founded it. I, I've known Rodney for Rodney and I went to uh, BKS Iyengar uh, uh, school together. We. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we've known each other for about 35, 36 years. Oh, okay, okay. And so, the, um, when you, uh, in, again, in looking at your books, you, you, have, you have so many different um, exercises and types of pranayama and explanations, and yet, and yet you're saying at this point in your journey, your practice is, is watching, observing your breath. Yes, that's exactly right. Um, I, I, I've, I've, I've come all around full circle, and uh, I'm back to the beginning again. Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's important to, to establish what, what I call the authentic breath. And um, Parkinson's has, has an effect on breathing too. It, it, it sort of, sort of, it, it sort of. Um, what the word is? Um, it, it shortens you in, in the front uh, of the torso, and it, it makes it makes full, full deep breathing very difficult. So I, I use my breath as sort of a, a like a, a what would you call it a a, 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 pri, a, a, a rather prize things open, and I'm trying to open the chest up a little bit more using the breath. And you use the term authentic breath. So when I hear the word authentic, it makes me think not so much of an outer state, but an inner state. Well, it's it's a it's breathing that's, that that has no that, that has a minimum of resistance and a minimum of effort. I think a lot of a lot of us, um, a lot of my students, um, their breathing is 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 restricted in certain ways because of posture and tension and other things too. So you have to before you start a, a, a pranayama practice. That, that, uh, before you start pranayama practice, you have to let you have to find the, uh, you have to let go of a lot of that uh, a lot of those obstacles to, to breathing. Here, Otherwise, you just so, go ahead. Uh, here. Well, here here in San Diego, at, at my meditation classes, I teach that breath, body, mind, and emotions are all intertwined. Mm-hmm. So, yes, of course. So when you say uh, the restricted breath, it, it makes me think that the, the restrictions can be emotional, they're mental. Oh, there are all kinds of restrictions nowadays. Yes, absolutely. And in your students, do, you, you see the restrictions in their breath, and by, by helping them clear their breath, you're helping them clear all kinds of things that probably you can't see what they are, but you see them reflected in the breath. Right. <laughs> Sometimes they don't want to be cleared. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, the resistance. Uh, uh, yes, there's the re- their resistance, and sometimes it gets, it, gets pretty, uh, it gets pretty difficult for some, some of the students. As you say, the, the body holds emotions, and when the breath sort of triggers those emotions into the open, uh, there, there could be some there could be some very unpleasant experiences. So you have to be very careful about how you teach breathing because I think I think people don't understand the the, the power of, of breathing, the transformational power. And and know. if someone is beginning to, if they're going into asana classes and they're they're enjoying some of the simple breathing techniques they're learning. What, what, how do you recommend they deepen their pranayama practice without crossing that line into what you say, how it can be uh, dangerous to push yourself too far? Well, you have to watch yourself very carefully when you, when you, when you breathe. You have to make sure that your emotional state is, 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 is not being disrupted. I mean, in the old books, see, I have a cold, excuse me. <laughs> in the old books, they say that your mind should be sattvic before you even begin the practice. And sattvic, just for so, our listeners, means it means it means clear. Uh, it means calm and quiet and light, something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so, I, I think it's important that. Um, oh, I, I, and I lost thread of thought here. Oh, right? oh, you're saying about the ancient books talking about the sattvic mind. Sattvic mind, yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, you have to be very careful when you when you do a pranayama practice that you don't. You don't push yourself beyond uh, reasonable limits. Uh, you can you can sort of push yourself in an asana class. Uh, you, you know, if you want to touch your toes or whatever you want to, but uh, pushing yourself in breathing is is is, is not a good idea. Uh, it, 
it can really can really create some very unpleasant experiences. So you have to watch yourself uh, over time. If you have a bad day, for example, uh, that's that, that that's just you know you can just turn the page after that. But if it persists day after day after day after day, then then there's something you're doing something that's not healthy, and uh, you have to talk to a teacher about that. Oh, I see. In terms of pushing, you're doing your pranayama practice, and if one day there's a bad day, but if you continue that same practice and the bad days continue, then exactly. that's the warning sign. I see. Exactly. It's over time. If your practice isn't 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 feeding you, isn't making you happy, then uh, then there's something wrong. You have to figure out what that is really quickly. And I was looking at one of the yoga studios where you teach, and your class is called complete yoga and I was, yeah, well, I, was wondering, I was wondering if you could describe uh, your that well, type of class well uh, the, that's that's the, that's the school in Oakland and, uh, they don't they don't put levels on their classes uh, they, they, they want you to um, describe your class <laughs> and that's what I came up with um, I guess the idea behind that is that um, I, I, I don't just do a, a lot of the class none of my classes all of my classes, I should say, have a, have a pranayama practice involved in it. And the, the intermediates have meditation, too. So I suppose what I meant by that is that um, complete yoga means that there's going to be a breathing practice near the end of the class. And you and you put in some meditation in some of them and then a little philosophy? I, I do that with the, I do that with mostly with, with the intermediates. Uh, but if, if I have a, an experienced beginning class, I'll do that, too. And for those people who are familiar with pranayama but not necessarily familiar with meditation, how would you describe the the shift or the difference between the two, the transition? Well, pranayama is uh, is working with your breath. You 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 stand back from your breath, so to speak. Um, it's I mean, it's, it's kind of a false practice because you you really you really can't get it, stand back from your breath entirely. Your breath and your your consciousness are two sides of the same coin. But in, in the breathing practice, you're watching your breath and you're looking to see. You're looking to see what your reaction is. You're looking to see where you're holding and where you're where you're resisting. It, it, you're, you're 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 standing back from your breath. Uh, I'm, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> but um, in, in in meditation, um, I, I I take meditations from uh, from the old Hatha text, and um, there's they're usually some kind of a visualization that that that, that describes. And in one in autobiography of a yogi, one thing that always struck stuck in my mind was when Yogananda talked about that in the state of samadhi, breathing stops because mind has stopped. And is is that does it always have to be that way, or is or is that a certain approach to reaching that state of super consciousness? Well, that sounds a lot like the, the classical model of pranayama, uh, in which uh, breathing. Pranayama in, in, in Patanjali is, is simply uh, slowing your breath down uh, and, and coming to a stop, if at all possible. Uh, there's nothing else. There's nothing else going on because uh, breathing movement is a routine. It's, it's, it's a fluctuation, and you're trying to calm those superficial fluctuations so that you can turn your attention inward uh, and, and look at the, look at uh, look at what's going on inside. So. Um, I would say that yeah, that that, that, that um, it, 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 it's a formula. I think in yoga, you know, they say stop this, and, and, and then that stops too. So if you if you stop your breath, your the, the, the fluctuations will of uh, your of your consciousness will will, will certainly slow down. And and by stopping the breath, is it? Because my common sense sense mind says, well, you can't stop breathing. But, but no, you can't. But, but is it just it gets really, really slower in this super really conscious? Really slow. Uh-huh, I see. And then the mind becomes really slow and there's this deep peace. You, you, if you, uh, I'm sure you've had this experience when you, uh, if you have a, a project in front of you and you're very sort of intent on it, um, you're, you're, you, you stop moving, uh, the breath slows way down, and you become very uh, inwardly focused. And things could be going on around you and you may not even hear them until they until they become a little bit more um, intrusive. But, uh, you know, it, it, that's, a, that's a form of samadhi right there. That, that super state of concentration on, on, on one thing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, samadhi is, is, uh, is, it really is a, a, 
is uh, is, an, is is a state where you become uh, uh, you, you, samadhi means put together. In other words, you, you you enter into whatever it is you're meditating on. So you, you see it from the inside, and you you, you understand it that in its essence. Wow, it's it's great to speak to someone who can elucidate these subtle spaces so well. Um, you, so let's talk about your foundation. I was as as a uh, as our yoga studio here in San Diego. We've graduated about 150 teachers, and it's yeah. for me it's so inspiring to see people excited and inspired to either teach in studios or. or um, there's one of our teachers who graduated recently who has MS, and she's working with MS patients. There's people who like yes. to work with uh, children. And you have yeah. your, your Dana Foundation, and can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, well, uh, we started out, I, 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 I don't know how much of this history you want, but, but it started out at California Yoga Teachers Association. At one point, we uh, it was a nonprofit that owned Yoga Journal, and oh. the board of directors uh, took... Uh, you know, um, took a, had a hand in, in running the magazine. Eventually, uh, Yoga Journal got into a little bit of trouble financially, and so we sold it to a, a man by the name of John Abbott, uh, who uh, was uh, who came, who was the white knight in shining armor, who came in and saved Yoga Journal, and um, he bought it and built it up quite nicely over the years. Kept it very true to the yoga tradition and um, and then she, then she sold it and um, we had, we had kept uh, the California Yoga T- Teachers Association that is it kept it, uh, uh, a percentage of the um, of the magazine so that when uh, when John sold we got some money oh I see and we've been, we've invested that money and we now have uh, 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 I, I'm not quite sure how much it is anymore but uh we have money to give away every year. We have to. The, the IRS tells us we have to give this money away. <laughs> so we we we, um, we 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 have a, 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 an application process on our website. It, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's restricted to, to the eight or nine uh, counties in the Bay Area. We can't. We don't have the wherewithal to, to do it statewide or nationwide. And you you make it a, you make it a, an application, and we we, we decide if, if it's if it's if it's a viable application. Um, we've given money to, right now we're giving money to uh, the Cerebral Palsy Center up in, up in Oakland. Um, we're giving money to um, uh, something called the Piedmont Yoga Community, that, uh, the, the organization that supports uh, teaching for uh, disabled students and for cancer survivors. We're giving money to um, a, me- uh, a gentleman who works at, at San Quentin teaching yoga at San Quentin Prison. Uh, Giving money to a Parkinson's class that I started many years ago that I, I turned over uh, to a friend of mine. So we're helping people who teach uh, in prisons, jails, uh, low income, homeless, uh, disabled, abused children, abused teenagers, um, uh, you name it, and we've we, we, we given some money to those people. Wow, that sounds like fantastic work. So it sounds like thousands of people a year are benefiting. Well, I don't know about thousands, but. <laughs> Certainly, hundreds. Uh, um, the teachers go out into the community and they and they work with they work with uh, all sorts of uh, community health centers, uh, uh, elementary schools. We have a program that's that's teaching yoga in, in uh, San Francisco high schools. Uh, and I, I can't I can't I can't think of them all right Congratulations. now. Congratulations! Uh, that's that's uh, that's amazing. Well, work. well, we, we've been doing it for uh, about ten years, actually. Um, so uh, we, 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 we've given we've given away. Uh, I think it was the last count was over a million dollars. Boy, that's 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 what the world needs more of. Uh, yeah, it would be nice if we, we, we were talking uh, at our last meeting about trying to find ways to promote this this um, this movement uh, and, and make it and make it a more nationwide movement. I think that you know modern yoga, as opposed to traditional yoga, which was very exclusive. Uh, modern yoga is is very inclusive, and uh, we our, our goal is to bring in as many people as we can, no matter what their physical state or uh, their economic condition, things like that. And you mentioned you mentioned a whole range of we could say underserved populations, and yet they're all benefiting from the practice of yoga. So, what is it about yoga that can help 
someone who's homeless, someone who's in prison, someone with cere- cerebral palsy? Well, it, it's different. It's different benefits for different, different groups, I suppose. You know, uh, people with Parkinson's, for example, uh, they benefit. It, it, it helps them. It, it alleviates the symptoms uh, a little bit. And, and I won't say that yoga is, 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 a, is, a, is a cure-all for Parkinson's, but uh, they all go home feeling a little bit happier um, than, than when they came in. Uh, we we also, you know, people, in, uh, people in, in prisons or juvenile halls, Yoga helps them to um, deal with their uh, deal with their emotions a little bit better. Um, some of the some of the uh, people who are in uh, uh, health centers uh, will uh, benefit from the health the health benefits of yoga. So it, it's different things for different people depending on who they are. And one of the things I notice here at our studio is after someone's been coming to the classes for a month or two, you start to see their breathing is calmer, their posture's better. Absolutely. And, and yeah. I think that just flows into anything, any any problems they're dealing with. And, right. and so it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a great... Um, now, you've... So it sounds like you were, you were right there at the... At the um, at the ground floor when Yoga Journal was happening with the explosion of mm. yoga. Well, uh, Yoga Journal uh, was started in 1975 by my friend, Judith Lasseter, so of her acquaintances. And I came on the board of the California Yoga Teachers Association in 1990, so I wasn't exactly on the ground floor. Okay, well, well uh, and well, you've seen, you've seen, but you know the the growth of yoga and all the things it can do, and I'm wondering yeah. how how you, what you see happening in yoga over the next ten or fifteen or twenty years. What what you think the potential is of of, of well, yoga? Well, the potential is is enormous. It just depends on you know how this how this country, how the people in this country, how, how they direct it. I think there's two streams right now. There's an exercise stream, which is perfectly fine. I have no objection to that. Uh, it, it just makes people healthier physically, which is um, which has a precedent in traditional yoga. There's, there's, if you read the old books, they say if you do this practice, you, your hair will turn black again, and <laughs> your belly will be flat. And be strong as an like, elephant. Yeah, you know, yeah, and you look like Kama. There's, I don't know which book it is. Karata. They say that you, you look like Kama, and you'll be irresistible to the opposite sex. So. <laughs> that didn't work with me, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. But uh, 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 hopefully, I mean, uh, there's another stream that I, that, I, that, I, that I see that people are becoming more. Uh, my, my feeling about Hatha Yoga in this country is that it's in it's, 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 it's earliest stages. I mean, Vivekananda is, is usually credited with bringing yoga to this country in 1893, but that, that's just not, that's not really true. He brought a form of meditation. Right. Uh, the hot uh, yoga really didn't come and get, get established until the late forties when Andrew Debbie came and, and opened a studio in Hollywood. So basically, we've had we've had yoga in this country maybe sixty seven years, which is relative to the twenty five hundred years in, in India. Uh, it's uh, it's just it's, it's, it's a blink of the eye, and uh, we're we're all yoga babies right now, lying in our cribs, wiggling our fingers and toes. Um, so. The people who are teachers now, your 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 students down in San Diego and all the other um, people who are coming through these yoga trainings uh, have a huge responsibility. They they will, to a large extent, help determine the course of yoga in in, in, in this country in the West in the future, uh, and we'll have to see what what they what they do. Yoga hatha yoga is incomplete right now. It, it's not. It it, 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 it had to be alter it in certain ways to make it more uh, accessible to a mass audience. And so there's some things that are missing, I think, from, from the practice that need to be that need to be added to it to make it a truly transformative practice. What that is, I, I don't really, I, I don't really know exactly what that might be, but it's something that it's something that everybody that's becoming a teacher nowadays has to think about. Well, one th- one thing I see in our teachers because our our, pro- our teacher training program features. Um, quite a bit of meditation and pranayama and I see the teachers when they go to teach the um, group classes with people coming primarily for exercise what, what they do is I see them incorporating the yamas and also and the, the breath like you're talking about and it seems to help the, 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 the student body be more aware of that other dimension yeah well I'd like to say one thing that uh, it, uh, uh, the, uh, 
the, the, just since the Yoga Sutra is such a, 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 a widely read book, there's I think there's a misconception about the yamas that there's only five of them. There's actually like thirty or forty different yamas, and uh, you know there's things like compassion and courage and bravery and things like that. And I think that there should be there should be a more there should be a greater awareness of those of those of those other uh, of those other yamas that more than just truthfulness and and, uh, and uh, non harming like that. And you're you're working on a new book, Yoga FAQs. <laughs> And I'm wondering, is is that something you're going to touch on? <laughs> the 30 yamas for everyone? I'm struggling with a new book. It's called, yes, it's called, it's, it's going to be called Yoga FAQ. Um, this book is uh, becoming, <laughs> <laughs> um, Shambhala has, uh, I've given Shambhala every opportunity that, that, I, that I can to dump me. <laughs> I, I'm really feeling bad about taking so long to write this book. How long have you been uh, at it, this one? I've been at, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but I've been at it for more than a year. I know that much. Oh, that's not long. Ah, uh, well, it feels like a long time. They've given me several extensions, and they've been very generous about that. They really want this book to be written. Uh, so um, I'm, 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 I'm plugging away. I'm sitting here at the computer right now, actually, uh, with this. I was working on this morning before you called. Uh, well, yes, I'm working on a book. It's called Yoga FAQ, and um, we haven't stumbled on the subtitle yet. But it's a, it's a book of uh, questions about, about yoga. Uh, you know, there, it's, there's chapters on the Yoga Sutra, Hatha Yoga, um, Vedas. Uh, so there's a chapter on Sanskrit. Um, and there's a chapter on modern yoga. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm plugging away, let's say that. Well, on behalf of all the other yogis out there, I want to thank you for everything you do to spread yoga and share it with others and, and keep, uh, keep yoga on track in America. Thank you very much. It's very nice to talk to you. Okay, Richard, th- thank you very much for joining us. And to all our listeners out there, I encourage you to read Richard's books. And also, if you're interested in the Dana Foundation, you can find more information at yogadanafoundation.com and also on our website at PYO Yoga, we've created a listing in the resources directory. And so thank you again, Richard. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very Very much. much. Okay. Thanks for joining us. This has been a production of Pilgrimage of the Heart Yoga. Join us at our studios here in San Diego or visit us online at pyo.yoga. Namaste.